What's up? It's Regan with Oil With Me, and that stands for Own Your Life With Me. Today, I have a couple of climate-friendly hacks that are really easy to do, things you can keep in mind if you want to have a more climate-friendly lifestyle and minimize your environmental footprint. So without further ado, let's let it rip. First of all, you know me, Regan the Vegan, um, studying nutrition. Obviously, I want to talk about food. You want to be eating as plant-based as possible because the animal aspect of agriculture, the big factory farms and the amount of resources and energy and land and water it takes to produce meat is incredibly a inefficient if you're thinking about it from an engineering perspective unethical if you're thinking about it from an animal rights perspective and environmentally damaging so you're going to want to eat as as plant-based as possible minimizing your consumption of dairy minimizing your consumption of meat you're also going to want to eat as many local and seasonal vegetables. Get those involved if you can. You can use resources online to learn about what's in season. Basically what this is doing, you're not only supporting your local agriculture and your local farmers, but, and more likely than not eating more organic and more healthfully, um, your body also really responds well to things that are in season in the area around you. And you're minimizing food miles. There's a lot of embodied carbon in the food that is shipped all around the world and exported and imported. Uh, the food miles associated are really damaging for the planet. So if you can eat as close to home as possible, that's brilliant. I also love local veg boxes. Imperfect Foods is one of my favorites. It sells you ugly vegetables that would otherwise be thrown away um, but taste phenomenal. And CSAs, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, are also brilliant. Another aspect of food, food waste. Super depressing. We actually throw away over a third of the food that we produce globally. It doesn't even hit our plates. A lot of this happens pre-consumer. So it's happening on grocery store level, on the farm level, on the import export refrigeration level. Um, and food waste, if it were a country, would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases. So if you can, composting is huge, um, making sure that you're eating and shopping responsibly and doing what you can to minimize your food waste uh, footprint. And I have tons of videos about that you can check out. Next, fighting fast fashion. I need to talk about fast fashion because fashion industry is more polluting than aviation and shipping combined. That's because we have this insatiable demand for new clothes all the time. Not only are those clothes resource heavy to make, they're full of synthetics, chemicals, pesticides, dyes that you don't want on your body. And the lifestyles and the wages for these workers in Southeast Asia working at these garment factories is abhorrent. If you haven't seen the true cost, stop this video right now, go watch that, it's free on Netflix. This documentary will rock you to your core, it will change your life, and you will really reconsider being on this hedonic treadmill of purchasing new clothes, wearing them once, and throwing them away into a landfill. Some options that you have for combating fast fashion and getting into a more regenerative, slow fashion moment, you can thrift, you can shop vintage, you can swap clothes with a friend, you can repair the clothes you have, you can think to yourself, maybe I don't even need new clothes after all. Some great choices would be Depop, The Stare, The Real Real, Poshmark, these are places where you can sell old clothes to people and give them a new life, and you can purchase clothes secondhand. Finally, if you do need to purchase new clothes, opt for sustainably made, um, ethically sourced, and environmentally friendly brands. There are tons of them out there, and they're getting more and more affordable as we reach an economy of scale. Further, if you have clothes that you want to donate, um, you can use the service from Thread Up. I really love them. Next, let's talk about energy. So you can actually shift the energy provider in your home to be a green energy provider. I did that in Boston. It guarantees that a certain percentage of the energy coming into your home is from a renewable source. If you have to travel, um, obviously opting for public transport or uh, electric vehicles that are um, on renewables, obviously better. But if you do have to travel, I recognize that we're in a world where flight is sometimes inevitable. You can use carbon offsets. And what that means is these are companies that are uh, basically calculating the amount of miles that you traveled and you make a donation and they um, create a carbon offset for you based on your the carbon footprint of your journey. So you can use offset.climateneutral.org or Carbon Fund. There's a lots of great organizations. Or you can plant a couple trees in your backyard or donate to an organization that plants trees just to try to um, mitigate or compensate for your impact. Obviously, it doesn't take away the damage that was done, but um, at least you can sort of come to a net neutral place. Finally, ditching single-use plastic. Single-use plastic is a massive, massive environmental devastation, not only because it takes a ton of oil and energy to create this plastic that then we use for 11 minutes on average and then throw away into a landfill. It's polluting our ecosystems, it's creating biodiversity loss, habitat loss for animals, 
creating microplastics in the ocean that then get into the food chain. It is just a freaking disaster when you think about it. So a little bit of proactive homework for you. I love Packaged Free. It's an amazing store in Brooklyn and they have an online store as well. Um, they ship everything carbon neutrally and in reusable, uh, recyclable packaging. So do a little bit of upfront work, invest in some reusable utensils, invest in a reusable shopping bag, invest in a reusable water bottle. Some of the things that you find that you use on a daily basis that you are usually using plastic and throwing them away, kind of take a mental note, go on a little adventure with yourself for a week and have a tally or a little uh, list on your phone of the things that you threw away that were plastic and do your best to go back and try to purchase sustainable reusable alternatives of those things. As with everything, baby steps is important. Don't be too hard on yourself. Honestly, perfectionism can sometimes stop us in our tracks and prevent us from taking action at all. So a little bit of good action, a step towards a more eco-friendly, climate-friendly lifestyle is going to be better than not doing anything at all, or over-preparing or sitting on your hands or feeling overwhelmed. So do the little things that you can do and slowly build upon those habits and they will compound to make a huge difference. I'm all about owning your life. I'm all about ditching the default. I'm all about doing the little things that add up to be big impact and huge ripple effect of positivity. So share this video with someone that you love if you think they could benefit from these hacks. And let me know in the comments what hacks you love, what hacks I missed, and some of the ideas that you have around being a climatarian and um, living eco-friendly, plastic-free, zero waste, all of the amazing things that so many of us in this community are striving towards. So huge credit to you. Thanks for watching. Love you all so much.